fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Hear that? It's the sound of a mighty American Airlines flagship taking off. You know, being an American Airlines pilot is an exciting job. And now, thanks to Cheerios, you too can share in that fun. Because inside every specially marked package of Cheerios, you'll now find a free American Airlines air travel game. Yes, a free airplane game for you and your friends. Complete with instructions, four airplane playing pieces, a spinner, and two playing boards. You're the pilot in this exciting air travel game. And you play on a real American Airlines system map that adds to the fun. On the back, you'll find another paper game board with lots of important information every American Airlines pilot must know. So how about it? You be the pilot. Get your complete American Airlines air travel game today, free in Cheerios. Look for the special Cheerios package with a flying airplane on front. Supplies are limited, so hurry. Ask for Cheerios today, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! Snow was falling in the Texas panhandle. The Lone Ranger waited near a campfire in a grove of cottonwoods near Batesville, while Toto went into town. Soon he returned. Oh, it's got hope, fella. Easy, it's got. Easy. Was there a letter from Dan, Toto? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, well, we'll see what he has to say. Yeah, let's see. Dear Uncle and Toto, thanks for a wonderful Christmas vacation and for the fine gifts you both gave me. The time went all too fast while I was with you. Mm. It goes fast for us. It seemed like Dan, not here two weeks. That's right, Toto. It goes on to say it's a coincidence that you told me to send this letter to Post Office Box 12 at Batesville. My roommate comes from a ranch near there. His name is Jerry Baldwin, and his folks have a big sheep ranch. I feel sorry for Jerry. He may have to leave school soon. A big rancher named Corey hates sheepmen and is turning the other ranchers against Jerry's father. Jerry is afraid the ranchers will start a real range war against his father and his sheepmen and cause greater losses, not to mention bodily harm. Mm, that's plenty bad, Timothy. Yes. Dan finishes by saying, I hope things work out for Jerry and his folks. He's a fine fellow and wants to finish his schooling. Give my best regards to Toto and tell him to take good care of Victor, your loving nephew, Dan. P.S. Give my regards to Sally Jackson when you see her, Dan. <laughs> uh, Dan, still remember first kiss. Uh, tell her Jerry, good friend of Dan. Yes, Tonto. I'd like to do something for his people. What's more, if there's danger of a range war in this territory, we better stay around and do what we can to prevent it. The next two days brought warmer weather, melting what snow had fallen. But there was a threat of real winter weather in the morning air when Huck Corey and several other horsemen pulled rain in front of the Baldwin Ranch House three days later. <laughs> Charlie Baldwin and his wife Sarah, parents of Dan Reed's roommate, came out onto the porch to greet them. Good morning, Corey. Mr. Corey, just why did you come here this morning? Because some of those mangy, bleating sheep of yours got on my range again, that's why. It happened last night. And it's too bad they did, Baldwin. About half a dozen of them won't go back. 
You shot him, huh? Well, you... Put away your gun, Charlie. No need to start trouble. Easy to see you have more sense than your husband, ma'am. She has more sense than you have, too, Corey. Because if trouble starts, we'll be ready for it. That's big talk, Baldwin. But just let any more of those critters go onto my range, and I'll put my men to work running a fence across the end of Deep Canyon. You may have overlooked the fact that the canyon is really part of my holdings. But the canyon's useless to you. And if you fence it off, we'll have to leave our flocks in the open. And we'll lose half of them when the big storms come. Be that as it may, ma'am. If those sheep graze on my range once more, that canyon will be fenced off. If you want to use it this winter, keep those smelly critters off my range. Let's go, men. Get up. Come on, get up. Oh. Late that afternoon, the foreman Tex and some of the Circle C ranch hands were in the Nugget Cafe in Batesville when a cowpoke came from the ranch. Hey, Tex! And Mr. Corey says for all of you to ride out to the ranch right away. Uh, Why? He said we could come to town. Yeah, but more sheep are on our range. The boss is fit to bust a button. Well, what's he figuring on doing? He says we're going to fence in Deep Canyon. We'll work by torchlight if need be, so as to get it up in a hurry. Well, boys, I reckon we got work to do. Let's go. That'll sure ruin Baldwin. Sure will. Come on. Tonto, who had been standing at the rear of the cafe, went out through the back door as the cowhands left. A short time later, he arrived at the camp in the nearby hills and told the Lone Ranger what he had heard. The masked man decided to talk to the cattle rancher. Early that evening, Huck Corey, a widower who lived with his only daughter, Lucy, entered the ranch house just as Lucy came from her room, dressed to go out and carrying a letter in her hand. Good evening, Lucy. Hello, Dad. What do you get your coat on for? Where you... You opened your heart of it. Did I say coat? What is that you got on there? <laughs> Why, this is the latest thing, Dad. I ordered it from the east through a friend. What on earth kind of critter has fur like that? And by Jiminy, it looks almost... Say, that's sheepskin. Uh-huh, the latest thing and warm as toast. Sheepskin. By the great horn spoon girl. What's got in there? Don't you know that you... Not bad. Don't be silly. Huh? Just because you don't like live sheep is no reason to carry on because I wear the skin of a dead one. <laughs> oh, come on, Dad. I want someone to mail this letter for me. I think I'll go out to the bunkhouse. Yeah, let me see that letter. But, Dad. Yes, she says, sir. The Jerry Baldwin, the son of that smelly sheepman. He's the friend who talked to you into buying that coat, huh? Dad, that's my letter. Jerry and I aren't interested in your troubles on the range. He's a wonderful Get boy. Get into but... your room and take that, that mangy sheepskin coat off. And as for the letter. Dad. Oh, Dad. Dad, I'm sorry. Sheep. Sheep. They even come back from the dead to haunt me. Yeah, who can that be? Mr. Corey. I'm Huck Corey. What are you... The best out who Hold it. There's no need for gunplay. Your dog going fast on the draw, mister. But if my men were here... I'm you... not an outlaw, as you seem to think. I came here to talk to you, that's all. What about? About the fence you're putting up at Deep Canyon. Hey. I get it. Baldwin heard about it and sent a mask on right here to threaten me, eh? No, I don't know, Baldwin. He didn't send me. Mr. Get off his spread and stay off. Now, get your... I'll take that gun. See? My wrist will go. I, I have it. Sorry to twist your arm. Now, I'll finish what I came to say. If you still want to go... Come, Tommy. Come quick. Some of the cow folks coming in. Now, Mr. I'll do the talking. See you again, Corey. Hey, my gun! Here on the ground. Easy, big fella. Come on, come on. My gun tag never... Gun no short breeze. Use your guns, men. Hurry. He's a masked outlaw. Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Woo! 
All over the country, in every direction How you, how you doing is the question And here's one that the happy people have to play Sure, take champion Bob Cousy, who can really make a basketball do tricks. Bob was born in New York, plays with the famous Boston Celtics. <whistles> Leads them all in fast break play, and Cousy knows the champion way. Starts his day the Wheaties way. <whistles> take Neil Johnston, another great champ from the East. Say Neil has been eating Wheaties since he was three feet tall instead of six foot eight. Grew up a long ways on them, didn't he? Mighty appetizing eaten, and there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties, and you'll be do 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 okay. okay. Now to continue. The darkness was in their favor and the Lone Ranger and Toto managed to get away safely. Two nights later, a strong, bitter wind blew from the north, bringing thick, swirling snow with it. Huck Corey was busy going over accounts when his foreman, Tex, entered the ranch house. Uh, it's mighty cold out there, boy. <laughs> Just the kind of weather to put those sheep men out of business. You know, Tex, if Baldwin was raising any other kind of critter, I wouldn't have done that to him. But the sheep will ruin the rangers for cattle by cropping off the grass right down to the roots. Yeah. Well, I, I reckon after a few days of this weather, we won't be bothered anymore by Baldwin's pesky sheep. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'll see you in the morning, boys. Good night, Dick. Uh, let's see. Dad. Huh? Oh, it's you, Lucia. I didn't hear your door open. I thought you were sleeping. I can't sleep with that moaning wind. I heard you talking to Tex. Mm. Will the Baldwins really lose their sheep? No, no. Stop worrying your pretty head about Baldwin sheep, Lucy. And go back to bed. I have more paperwork to do before I turn in. Well, go on. I'm sorry. Good night, Tex. Yeah. dawn, snow was still falling when the Lone Ranger and Tonto left their sheltered camp in the hills and rode a trail that passed both the Cory and Baldwin ranches. Tonto, if Baldwin's sheep are left on the open range for the next 24 hours, a large number of them will die. Ah. We'll do what we can to help save those sheep. <laughs> easy, sir, easy, boy. Look, Tim Akabi. Horse stand under trees near trail. Yes, I see him. Come on, sir. Come, 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 brother. Oh, 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 easy, scum, easy, scum, easy, scum. Hmm. This horse carries the Circle C brand, Toto. He's been here for some time. The tracks are covered with snow. Ah. Saddle covered with snow. What we do? Take him back to the Circle C. Strange to find him here so early in the morning. Ah, but it's risky to go back to ranch. The ranch hands won't be there now. We'll chance it. I'll lead the horse. He's just... Come on, fella. Come on, fella. Come on, fella. Come on, fella. Come on, Later, the masked man and Indian stopped in front of the Cory Ranch House. Who's the... Who's the... Who's the... Who's the... Keep your guns handy, Tonto, to cover me in case I do run into trouble. Ah. Yeah, don't draw. You're covered. Where are you here this time? You we here. brought back one of your horses. Found him some distance down the trail. Someone must have been riding him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my daughter's horse. That's Lucy's own. Now we in conditions you... Do can... I have to hold this gun on you? Yeah, draft again. I want to know how you Where got... Where is your daughter? Well, she's supposed to be in bed. Perhaps you'd better check. Yeah. Sit inside a minute. Sure. All right, sir. Read it. There she says. Dad, after what was said tonight, 
I'm going to find some way to help the Baldwins. Lucy. Great day. She, she left here last night. She must have ridden to the Baldwins. Remember, huh? we found her horse down the trail. Yeah. If she were at the Baldwins' place, her horse would still be there. If, if she's been out in the storm all night, she'd be frozen. If it's my fault. She heard me talking to Tex about the sheep and she... Easy, easy, Mr. Corey. She likely rode to the range to find out about the sheep. Yes. The horse threw her. Get your men together and we'll search for her. But the, the men are down at the canyon. The foreman came in early and said Baldwin and his men were fixing to rip down the fence. The only thing to do right now is to go there and prevent a fight. And get everyone to search the range for your daughter. All right, let's go. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto, accompanied by Huck Corey, rode toward Deep Canyon, they heard gunshots. Fight has started. Hurry. Come on, Phil. Uh, Get up here. Oh, 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 oh. Stop the fight. Hold your fire. Hey, look at the last man. He must have made the boss stop the fight. I'll get him. Hold it. Help. Your hand will be numb a while. The rest of you listen to Mr. Corey. You hey, mean my daughter Lucy is lost somewhere on the range. Right. She's been going all night. All night. I want all of you to spread out and search till we find her. Baldwin and his men are over there watching. Yeah, they'll start shooting every time. Uh, wait a minute. Hello, Charlie Baldwin. Come here for a talk. This is a truce. We'll host to our guns. We'll ride over. We'll still hold our guns. He's a friend, Charlie, believe me. Hey, listen. Lucy, my daughter, is lost somewhere on the range. Been going all night. What kind of a trick it's is this? It's the truth, Mr. Baldwin. I want my men to search for her. Forget the fight. Lucy? Lucy's all I have. In a bit of things. Easy, easy, Mr. Corey. Why, Thunder, you are telling the truth. And we like Lucy at our house. Bring your men, Huck. My men and I'll help you search. Sure, we will. Let's not lose time. Red. We'll search that range inch by inch till we find my daughter. Come on. Get up there. Come on, fill it. Oh. Following orders, the sheep men and the ranchers spread out and started the search for Lucy. The wind howled, and the snowstorm continued without let up as the Lone Ranger, Tonto, Corey, and Baldwin rode over the bleak, snow blanketed rangeland. Huck Corey, his face set grimly and with a cold dread clutching his heart, rolled in silence. After some time had passed, the group pulled to a halt. Oh, 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 oh. oh I, I told the others to signal with two shots if they he found anything. <laughs> that cry came over there. Yes, sir, heard it. Let's go. Oh, 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 Those sheep are too cold to run, the way they're huddled together. Now they're moving. One is still lying there. Oh, no, wait. Easy, Teddy. Oh. I, I'm here. Oh, Dad. A madman. Lucy, Lucy. Oh, Dad. The madman's man's a friend. What happened? My horse threw me and then he ran away. I sprained my ankle when I fell and I couldn't stand up. I yelled and yelled until my voice gave out. And then, Dad, the sheep gradually moved in beside me. And, Dad, the sheep in this cold kept me from freezing. Why did you leave the house? I wanted to help the Baldwins, Dad. I was going to talk to them. You see, Jerry Baldwin and I are going to be married someday yes? after he completes his education. Marry a sheepman's son? Jump and catch it. Oh, oh, my ankle. Now, that ankle needs attention as soon as possible, Lucy. Uh, signal the other sheep and found it. Then we'll take it to the ranch house. <laughs> Later, Lucy rested comfortably on a couch in the living room of the Corey Ranch House. The Lone Ranger and Tonto gave her injured ankle the attention it needed. Then the masked man said, There, that will take care of the injury until the doctor arrives. Thank you. I, I feel as if I've known you for a long time. A friend of mine knows Jerry at school. I've heard fine reports about him. Hey, Charlie, how long did you know your son and Lucy were... <clears throat> we're thinking of uh, getting married. Sarah and I knew it since Christmas, Huck. Eh? Huh? Jerry told us then. We were mighty pleased to hear it. You were? Even after all the fussing I've been doing and all? 
Professor Corey, you have a sheepskin coat in Charlie Baldwin's sheep to thank for the safety of your daughter. <coughs> yes, yeah, she sure has. Hey, I think I'll have the boys kill me a sheep so I can have a coat like that. Now, hold on, Corey. <laughs> Don't get your dander up, Charlie. I'll buy the sheep before they kill it. I reckon when the hide of one is about the quickest way to get to like the critters. No telling how many might die in this storm. Ooh, that's me. <clears throat> well, I, uh, I told Tex to take my men and yours and lift down that fence. And then they drive the sheep into deep canyon. What? <laughs> you know, I'd sure like to have seen the faces on those cowpokes when Tex told them they were going to help drive sheep. Oh, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> this is sure hard to believe. I'm glad you two men have settled your differences. I don't know leave now. Oh, uh, my friend who rooms with Jerry will let us know when to come back this way to kiss the bride. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Lucy blushing, eh? Dad, I am not. <laughs> Adios, everyone, and lots of happiness to you and Jerry, Lucy. Come on, Mother. Uh, Goodbye. Uh, sir. Yeah, he sure is a fine hombre, that masked man. But who is he, Huck? Huh? You doggone it. After all the help he gave us, I forgot to find out. I think I can tell you, Dad. Jerry wrote that he roomed with a boy who knows a certain math man. And after what he said about his young friend at Jerry's school, I'm sure that's the same math man. And he's known as the Lone Ranger. feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you